Hey guys, I'm Gene Delasala, president of Audioholics. Welcome back. We're here to do another video. It's been a while, I know. Hope you didn't miss us too much. Anyways, today I wanted to talk to you about the upgrade-itis bug. Knowing when to upgrade your home theater equipment. Let me tell you something, guys. Um, as somebody that's in the industry, I see all the new equipment very regularly. I have the ability to basically upgrade anytime I want. That's not a problem. So I'm kind of immune from this sometimes. But I am a consumer of other industries and I am a bit of a car enthusiast myself. And you know, I was thinking the other day, it's like, how many times have I purchased a new car thinking it was gonna be so much better than the car I already had, which was perfectly a good car to begin with, only to get buyer's remorse a few months later and say, you know, why did I just waste 30 or 40 grand on a new car when I had a perfectly good car before and the performance really may not have been quantum leaps ahead with the new car versus the old car. Well, the same thing happens in the audio industry as well, guys, any hobby. And you know, the, ma the marketing behind it will tell you, oh my God, this new model just blows away everything that's ever been made before. Throw everything away that was done before because that's all crap. It was only great until the new model replaced it, right? I mean, that happens all the time. And we, see, and we see this in the audio industry. So what I thought would be a good idea would be to go over the categories of products in home theater to help you decide when it's time to upgrade. So, you know, I think the first category should be AV receivers. Now, you guys may not realize this, but AV receiver, AV receiver product life cycles are almost as short as HDTV displays this time around now. You're looking at product life cycles of less than a year on these receivers. You know, years ago, that wasn't the case. Years ago, you may be every two or three years, these companies will come out with new products. That's not like that anymore. It's unbelievable how fast the technology changes. But when you step back and you look at the changes from one series to the next, usually it's very incremental and very subtle. Okay, I'll give you an example. We were just looking at the new Yamaha Avantage receivers, the A70 series. They just replaced the A60 series that we previewed a few months ago, right? So when you take a closer look, the only real difference you're getting from the A60 to the A70 is now you're getting Dolby Vision pass-through. And on the higher models like the 2060 and the 3060 going to the 2070 and 3070 models, you're getting a little bit of a higher end DAC. And on the 3070 model, now you're getting balanced inputs for someone that wants to do an audiophile CD player or something like that. So my point is, this is very incremental, guys. I mean, Dolby Vision is not even, it's not even out yet, okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's on its way, okay? But let's say seven, eight months from now, something else might come out. And, oh my God, now we got to upgrade again. Well, I say cool it for a while, okay? If you, you have to think about what you have right now in your rack. Does your AV receiver meet your needs? Does it have the latest surround codecs? You know, if you're still rolling with Dolby Digital and DTS, you need to upgrade, my friend, because you have lossless audio that you're missing out on, which is quantum leaps better than compressed audio. So, but if you're running Dolby True HD and DTS HD, and you don't plan on running height channels to take advantage of Atmos, and I'm not talking about the bouncy house speakers, we really will tell you that that's a last resort. But if you have no plans on running high channels and you're just going to run a standard 5.1 or 7.1 setup and your current receiver has enough power to satisfy your needs and it's meeting all your other other needs in terms of HD processing, I would say, you know, take a pass for a while until the thing breaks or until you're able to sell it and, and, and maybe get a good deal on a newer product. I would hold off. You know, and that brings me to another point now. If someone's contemplating on buying a brand new let's say Yamaha RX-A1070, okay? You could probably get the 2060 model from last year for the same price or less. I would go with the higher end, older model because you're no, more likely gonna get better amplifier sections, better DACs, better bass management. It's just always go with the older, better model if you can. That's really, that's the time, this is the time when you should be looking for deals on the older models. And let me just tell you, newer models don't always mean better. How many times have we taken new products in, and I hate to keep picking on Yamaha, but we have a lot of experience with Denon and Yamaha receivers. And years ago, we wrote an article on trading amplifier quality for features, and we found a Yamaha receiver, and you can look at the article, we'll link it up, that the model that replaced the ones before weighed about five to 10 pounds less 
and they started using chip amps in the in the product so the quality went way down because they were trying to add more features at those price points they couldn't meet and we called them out on it we wrote an article and then shortly after that that receiver line went away and they went back to discrete amplifiers so you got to be really careful with that guys and we've seen you know some of these products now that are coming out of the major manufacturers they're not built to the same standard they were 10 years ago you know you look at the front panel of it it's plastic instead of metal you know they used to be made in japan now they're made in the philippines or vietnam so the quality level may not be to the same standards they once were so again take that in consideration as well so I would also tell you if you're going to upgrade your AV receiver make sure you get one that has preamp outputs because if you need to add more power down the road you don't want to toss that whole receiver out you know you want to be able to use that model add external uh, amplification to it you can't do that without preamp outputs and if that preamp output model is only hundred or two hundred dollars more it's well worth it when you think about the long run of your home theater and how it will meet your needs when you expand it. So really consider that, guys, when it comes to AV receivers. So let's go to the next topic, which is similar to AV receivers, is amplifiers. You know, I can't tell you how many times someone's got this beautiful amplifier in the rack and then all of a sudden a new model comes out. Oh, it's Gen 3. It's got to be better, right? It's got a newly designed power supply. Let me tell you something. Amplifier technology hasn't changed radically in the last decade. I mean, yeah, now we've got some Class D, we've got digital amplification, some of it's higher efficiency. Some of that's a mixed bag. Don't always think the higher efficient amps are going to be a better solution for you. Some of them aren't. Some of them don't play well with complex load impedances, and the efficiency that you get, the extra efficiency you get, sometimes is not worth it. So be leery about trading your amplifier, and if you've got a perfectly good running amplifier that sounds good, provides plenty of power to your speakers, why are you going to, why are you going to, break, why are you going to fix something that isn't broken? Okay, if you're going to go from a 200 watt model to a 250 watt model, that's an infinitesimal amount of more loudness you're going to get out of the product. Okay, you've got to double your power just to get 3 dB of perceived output level increase. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you've got a good amplifier already, stick with what you got, stick with the basics. You know, put that money towards something else that we'll talk about coming up. So, what about source components? Let's stick with Blu ray players. Now here's the thing, if you're using the HDMI output of the Blu-ray player, they are pretty, they're pretty consistent in performance these days. I mean, it, you have to get a really crappy Blu-ray player to get bad video performance, and the audio is either going to work or it doesn't. Now, the only time I would tell you to upgrade your Blu-ray player is, like in the case with my parents, they have a really low-end Samsung Blu-ray player. The thing is so slow with load times. It's just, it's painful, okay? It doesn't take software updates anymore, so the, so the Ethernet card broke on it. And the black levels, I can never get them right on it. So in that case, toss that thing out, get a new Blu-ray player. The other way is if you're looking at getting into HD Blu-ray and you've got an HD display, well, obviously, a regular Blu-ray player is not going to cut it. You're not going to get the 4K and higher uh, video rates. So then it's time to start looking at HD Blu-ray players. So that's really the only time you really want to upgrade is when there's a big difference. One more thing you might want to consider. Let's say you just recently upgraded to an Atmos receiver and you've got an older Blu-ray player that was working great on your true HD DTS HD receiver. But now you're noticing audio dropouts when you're watching um, Atmos movies and, and you're not encoding them in Atmos. Some of these older Blu-ray players had an incompatibility issue with Atmos. So in that case, it's time to get a newer model and you don't have to spend crazy amounts i mean we're big fans of oppo because their stuff works but you know panasonic there are some uh, models from samsung that are pretty good now too so think about that and if you're really going to use the analog outputs for two channel then splurge on the better model like oppo has a udp uh, 205 it's over double the price of the 203 and we're actually testing those right now but let me tell you this thing is beefed up it's got balanced outputs fully differential from input to output if you're a two-channel nut and you're going to use all analog outputs then it makes sense to get something like that and that's something you're going to keep and enjoy for a long time okay what about speakers speaker tech evolves the slowest out of all the av equipment it doesn't matter what these companies are telling you that they've just come up with a new exotic material they gold-plated beryllium and anod an anonium whatever they want to call it Animantium, I don't know. They come out with all these terms. Basic speaker design has been pretty 
pretty much the same for the last couple of decades. I mean, sure, it's getting a little bit better. The driver technology is a little bit better. You know, the crossovers are getting better because they know how to better simulate and, and, and to figure out how to get better dispersion out of these products. But quite frankly, a good speaker from 10 years ago is still a good speaker today. And just because a company has anodized a tweeter gold where the last model was silver, doesn't mean you should go and take a loss on a $2,000 pair of speakers selling them on eBay for 500 so you can get the new model. That's just stupid math. That's just not a good investment. You could use that money towards improving the sound of your room rather than making an incremental change in speaker technology. So think about that, guys. Think about if you're really happy or not with your speakers, if you have them properly set up right, if you have them properly base managed. Um, look, about, look about how your acoustics are in your room as well. If you've got a very echoey room, it doesn't matter whether you have a $200 speaker or a $20,000 speaker, it's gonna sound bad in that room. So focus on your room acoustics and speaker placement before you start upgrading your speakers. And we have tons of videos and, and, and articles on that which we'll link up here. What about subwoofers? Subwoofers is kind of the same thing as, as speakers. Now, let's say you've got a decent subwoofer that's got good output. I would tell you before you go and sell that subwoofer, if it's still a current model that the company sells, let's say it's an SVS PB2000, instead of selling that model to get their Ultra 16 or Ultra 13, why not get another PB2000? Get two subwoofers in your system. Dual subwoofers not only give you a little bit more output in your room, but they smooth out the base so you have more uh, consistent base from seat to seat. It's always better to have two subs over one. So before you go and sell that subwoofer, if it's a good model that you're happy with, consider getting another one of those models and putting two subs in your room. You're gonna love me for telling you that because once you get two subs set up, you never go back to one. Okay, so now we go to cables. Uh, ironically, cables are the simplest thing in a home theater system, but they're the most controversial. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, if your current cables are working and you don't have ground loops and you don't have noise in your system, and they're long enough and they're meeting your needs, don't change any of your cables. Okay, I'm telling you, listen to me now and believe me later. Don't fall for the hype. As long as you have low gauge speaker cables, you know, 12 gauge or, or lower is preferable, as long as they make good contacts with your speakers and your amplifier and they're of sufficient length, there's no need to go and get these exotic cables with exotic materials because all you're buying is jewelry and you're just wasting money. I mean, if you want to waste the money and you want to dress your system up, more power to you. But if you're really budgeting yourself to get the best, uh, the maximum performance out of your home theater, you're not going to get it out of buying higher end cables. Okay. Now, if you're having problems with your HDMI, let's say you've upgraded to 4K and now your HDMI cable is no longer working, it's getting dropouts. Well, now it's time to start looking at getting a better HDMI cable. And I'm not telling you to go with, with, with these exotic brands. I'm telling you to go with the reputable companies that actually product test and certify their HDMI cables like Blue Jeans Cable, you know, Monoprice, Tributaries. These guys make good, solid engineering HDMI cables without all the hype. And there's other brands out there as well, but if any brand that's telling you to put a battery on the cable, run away from that. That's a scam. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you right now. If they're telling you to co if they're telling you to soak it in kosher chicken fat and bless it by a rabbi on Sunday, run. Don't walk. Cables are the biggest hype in the entire industry. So just be careful with that, guys. You heard it from us. I've been telling you this for like 15 years. I'm not getting a lot of love for telling you the truth like this, but you know what? It's going to save you a lot of money and you're going to put that money towards something better that's going to make your system really sound good. And that's what I'm going to tell you about now. Before, like I said before, don't start buying new equipment until you know that your room is good. Okay, make sure your room acoustics are good. Make sure it doesn't sound like an echo chamber, but also you don't want it to sound like an anechoic chamber. You want to have a room that actually has a has the acoustics of so you can have a good, pleasant conversation in. But you don't want to have a lot of slap echo. You don't want it to be, you know, an annoying room where things sound bright and irritating. And we've got guidelines on on treating your first reflection points, um, putting some bass traps. If you if you only have one sub, then you you're probably going to need more passive room treatments for the bass frequencies, but it's usually better to do multi-sub and then you cut down on the amount of bass trapping that you need. And we've talked about that as well. So consider your room acoustics, consider your couches where they're placed. Believe it or not, I go into people's rooms where they have this great equipment 
and then they put a couch up against the wall, the back wall or a side wall. That's the worst place. That's the worst place for base. It's going to sound very boomy. It's the worst place to get good imaging, especially for your surround channels, because now you're going to be up against the wall, probably near a surround speaker. So we always tell you to keep the seating about a quarter of the length of the room away from the back wall. So if you got, you know, a 20 foot room, keep the, keep the couches four or five feet off the back wall. It's very simple like that, guys. Work on your speaker placement, work on your acoustics, then start thinking about what you want to upgrade. So that's about it, guys. You know, I'm kind of curious to see what have you upgraded in the last five or six months and what do you plan on upgrading going forward? You know, what do you think gives you the biggest impact for your money when you're upgrading equipment in your home theater? Is it the speakers? Is it the amplifier, the electronics? God, I hope you don't say it's the cables. So, you know, give us feedback. If you like the video, comment below, uh, thumb it up, share it. And guys, until next time, keep listening.